Hey guys, pulled out a pretty cool one to talk about today. It's an Austrian pistol from the 1990s and it's called the Wolf Ultramatic. And unfortunately it's another one of those ones where there's not very much information out there about them, so can't really get into the history a whole lot. About the only thing I've been able to find is a pretty rudimentary Wikipedia article and I'm not sure how accurate it is. It doesn't seem like it was written by someone who speaks English as a first language. But they say that the, com the gun was actually manufactured by a company called Ganstahl Sportpistole, which means all steel sport pistol basically in German. I'm not sure if that's true or not because I haven't found that name anywhere in the manual that came with this. As far as I can tell, the, cu the gun is actually manufactured by a company called Ultramatic and the gun is called a Sport Pistol SV. I'm not sure where Wolf comes into play, I'm not sure if that's a distributor or something. Um, there's a bunch of other little numbers and things, I'm not sure if, what all that is. There's another distributor over here, which by the way it's scratched out, I've seen that on a lot of these. I'm not sure what the story is with that. but. I think there's just sort of like a patchwork history behind these as far as how they got over to the country. Not many of them made it over. They were extremely expensive when they were being sold originally in the 1990s, somewhere around $2,000, which I'll get into it a little bit later, but the gun is extremely, extremely high quality, and really it's a $2,000 gun. It's just not very reliable, so they weren't able to sell very many of them. Nobody imported them. Because of that, there aren't very many here. Um, CDNN ended up buying most of the stock eventually and they sold them out for discounted rates of around $400 or something like that which was quite the bargain really for the quality it's just a, apart from the reliability issues um, it was really a pretty good deal so they're pretty hard to find nowadays because hardly anyone bought them originally but uh, they came in a few different calibers 40 Smith & Wesson like this one which is a shame really because I don't like that caliber at all but it's what I came across at a gun show one day and it was cool enough that I just kind of bought it up anyway uh, I'd love to find one in 9mm was another caliber. 38 Super is another caliber they came in because it is a competition gun. It says competition there. Uh, there was also an LV version that had a longer compensated barrel. So these really were geared at competition shooting. Um, so they came in 38 Special, or sorry, 38 Super, and then also I believe I've heard there are 45 ACP ones floating around in Europe somewhere. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But in any event, there were a few different um, calibers to shoot through these and a few different finish versions too. There was This one's blue, it's got a nice quality blue finish on it, but there was also a stainless steel version. There was a duo tone with had a, which had a bluer upper half and a stainless steel lower. Um, most of them came with wood grips, although I have seen a couple with black rubber grips. Uh, they didn't all have this rubber finger groove thing insert here either. It's really, there were quite a few different variations of these, you know, between calibers, barrel lengths, um, finishes, grips, all this stuff. The gun is single action only, double stack magazine. What makes it really interesting, which I haven't even talked about yet, is the feature right here. This here is a bolt. So you, you, you look at it and you think it looks kind of like, like a Smith & Wesson Robocop gun or something like that. But it's completely different, really. This thing here doesn't move at all. This isn't a slide like you'd think. What it actually is, is a bolt. And remember, this is shooting real cal real caliber here. It's 40 Smith & Wesson, 9mm, you know, it's not like a 22 that uses a bolt. And the reason they did that, according to the manual, is by having a lightweight bolt like that, you can get faster shots. Because it's less moving mass, you get less recoil, things like that. Um, fortunately, the plan didn't really work perfectly because it's uh, I get a lot of failures to extract on these. Talk about that in a second with uh, shooting impressions and all that. You can see there, there's a scope mount also indicates it's uh, competition orientation. Talk a little bit about the features for a minute before I go more into the, the mechanics of it. Um, it's pretty basic really overall. This is a, a thing that you use to take the gun apart, which I'll make a separate video about that because it's kind of involved and I don't want to bore everybody who's not interested in it. And you know honestly if you don't have the manual for this there's pretty much no way you'll be able to figure out how to take it apart. So I will make a separate video for that. Um, otherwise you know you have a safety here, single action only. Flip the safety up, flip it down, and it goes. This is a um, slide release, magazine release, pretty standard stuff, you know. Show you the sights. The sights are adjustable in the rear. Um, got that sort of outline there, and then up front. Sight picture is pretty good, and overall the gun is actually extremely ergonomic. These grips fit me perfectly. There's a nice beaver tail here that nestles into your hand. There's some rubber here. Overall, the gun feels just great to hold. It's extremely heavy also. It's about 48 ounces, which is, I mean, it's, it's if the company is actually called Gun Style, it's all steel. I believe it. This gun is very heavy, very solidly made. Pull out my Beretta to show you the size, like I usually do. You can see they're roughly the same size, but 
the uh, the Wolf Ultramatic weighs about 15 ounces more than the Beretta unloaded because of the weight and also I guess maybe the system here even in 40 Smith & Wesson there's just not very much recoil on it and like I said I'm not a fan of 40 Smith & Wesson at all so I haven't shot a lot of guns in that caliber but this thing really feels like sort of a a light 9 millimeter maybe when you're shooting it so I'd love to find a 9 millimeter version of this someday because I'm sure it would just be really pleasant to shoot as far as shooting goes it's extremely accurate I've had to mess with the sights for quite a bit to get mine on target and it still shoots a little bit high for me so I kinda have to compensate for that and I actually remembered last time I shot it to bring a target for this video I usually throw them out but this was from about probably 12 or 15 yards uh, two hands standing unsupported all that so not bad groups really and knowing YouTube, I'm sure there's dozens of guys out there right now typing up comments about how much I suck at shooting, but whatever. I'm happy with the accuracy on it. Trigger is quite good. Single action only. A little bit of movement before it goes, but once you pull it, not much creep at all. And I'll show you that up close. So the trigger is pretty good. Uh, the only thing about shooting, which I alluded to earlier, is it's not very reliable unfortunately. There's a lot of failure to extracts is the problem that I seem to encounter a lot. Where the slide is back and there's a, a round that hasn't, it's kind of stove piping and sticking out the side a little bit. That's the problem I encounter most frequently with it and it does happen I would say on average twice a magazine probably. You know every once in a while I'll get a magazine that goes through just fine. Overall unfortunately it's not a very reliable design which is a real shame because it's a lot of fun to shoot, it's accurate, um, Recoil is nice, you know. Um, overall, the gun is extremely nice. I'll show you the slide release. It's a bit stiff. The manual even says for the first thousand rounds, you should run really hot ammo through it just to sort of break it in a little bit because it's so tightly manufactured that that'll loosen it up and make it more reliable, which may be the reason that these have the reputation for not being reliable at all is because nobody had the patience to run a thousand rounds through it. I've put about 500 rounds through mine, and it maybe is getting a little bit better, but... Uh, it's definitely not near 100%. Maybe once I cross that thousand round threshold, I'll make an update video or something. But really, you know, moving into my criticism section that I always do, that's about the only criticism I can come up with for the gun. Apart from the reliability, it's extremely well made. It's nice and heavy. Ergonomics are great. You know, everything about it is, is superb. It's just the, the reliability is not there, unfortunately. You get failures to extract way too often. Um, another criticism is definitely going to be the breakdown procedure. It's really tedious and tricky and if you don't have the manual you're completely up a creek in my opinion which by the way I'll show you sort of what came with the gun when you first get it I got the box here which is a really cheap and simple box for a two thousand dollar gun in my opinion um, it also should have come with a sight key mine didn't but uh, and then it comes with the manual here which is written in German and English poor English I should say it's not written very well at all it's pretty tricky to understand but in my opinion without this manual I don't know if there's any way to really figure out how to completely disassemble the gun and get it back together successfully so anyone out there that has one of these guns and is missing the manual let me know and I can make a scan of this and send it to you send you a PDF or something but um, you know pulling this thing apart and putting it back together is really tricky and annoying and it takes a long time so I'll make a separate video for that just because it might be a little tedious for people who don't actually own one but uh, once I do upload that, you might want to check it out because it's pretty unique the way it comes apart and everything. So, it might be interesting for the engineers and stuff out there. You know, apart from those two things, though, the gun, as I've mentioned, is just it's a beautifully made gun. It's a $2,000 gun for a $400 price. If you can find them for that, that's what CDNN was selling them for. And nowadays, they still don't go for much higher than that. You're usually looking at four or five hundred dollars. And for that, the quality is just superb. If you can live with the failure to extract, it's just a great gun for the money. Mine is purely a range gun, so I don't really mind all those uh, reliability issues, and I'm hoping that maybe with a thousand rounds through it, it'll smooth out and and start really being reliable because it's a lot of fun to shoot, really accurate, great trigger, soaks up recoil even in 40. Can't wait to find one in nine millimeter. You know, all around the uh, Wolf SV Ultramatic Sport Pistol, whatever it's called, is uh, I highly recommend it if you can get it for a decent price. You know, if you ever come across one, you can just the second you pick it up, you can tell it's a quality gun. So. Highly recommend it if you can get over the reliability stuff, which I can. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool gun. So just keep an eye out for that disassembly video. And if you haven't seen it already, check out my shooting video of the gun. And thanks for watching.